Hello. Over the past few years, Cubase has included an increasing amount of content which is available across all versions of the program. While this may not be to everyone's taste, the content is typically of high quality and can be useful as a song starter or to allow you to program something that's in a genre you don't normally use. However, getting that content up and running seems to be a sticking point for a lot of people. The installation programs in the past have sometimes been a bit flaky in terms of whether the content even gets installed or where it gets installed to. And I often get people asking me, how do I get this content up and running? So this video has everything you need to get your content up and running. How to download it, how to install it, and how to access it. This is going to work for Mac and Windows, so let's get started. Okay, so here we are on the desktop. Now this is going to be done on a Mac, but it actually makes very little difference if you do this on a Mac or a Windows. There's a few minor differences, but actually running the programs is really much the same. So in this case, I'm just going to find first the Steinberg Download Assistant. So this is the first part of the process and possibly the first stumbling block for people. So Steinberg Download Assistant is what you're looking for. Okay, so you're going to run that on Windows. You just tap the Windows key, type Steinberg or download, and it will appear somewhere. It might be on your desktop. But either way, the Download Assistant is the first thing we want. And you'll see it gets launched and now you have to sign in. So you have to authorize it with your Steinberg account. So this means you need to have a My Steinberg account. Now this is another stumbling block because there is a different account needed for a My Steinberg account than there is for the Steinberg shop. Yeah, I know. So you'll have to have that set up. Obviously, I've already got one. So when you click sign in, it will open your browser and take you to steinberg.net. And I'm already signed in. So it's now going to ask if I want to authorize the download assistant, which I am. So you get something like this, and basically you need to click open link. You've probably seen this a lot because this is the kind of thing that you get if you have a Zoom link at the moment because it's the browser is trying to open up uh, a different program. So in this case, it's the Steinberg download assistant. So there we can see that. And now we will see all of the downloads which are available. So it takes a while to download those. And now we can see, in this case, we're going to look at a particular Cubase 11 content pack, but this is the same for all. So you'd have to find the version where it is. But in this case, Cubase 11, in this case, update, or the entire download. Either way, Bloom is the content sent we are interested in. So I've, I've not got that on this computer at the moment. So I'm going to click Bloom content sent, and then click download. So that will download that to where it needs to be. So now this is downloaded, you have two options here. So either you can click the install button and that should work. So that when you click that, that should silently load the Steinberg library manager in the background, but we're gonna do it a different way. But if you wanna try that, that generally that will work, but not always. So we're going to look at it from the Steinberg Library Manager. So we're going to close the Download Assistant. So in this case, I'm going to do it on the Mac first, but a little later on in the video, we'll do exactly the same thing on the PC. On the Mac, go to Finder and then click Downloads on the left-hand side. And here you can see the Steinberg folder. And then inside there, we have OS X, because that's the operating system we're on. And inside there, there's another folder named after the content set. And inside that, there's the .vst sound file. So as soon as you find one of those anywhere, all you need to do is double click it and that will open up the Steinberg Library Manager. So you see I've double clicked it, Library Manager appears and it says, here's library registration of Bloom. And we have some options. The thing to leave is install to default location. Okay, don't register in place because that would mean it would stay in the downloads folder, which obviously then you delete it, could be a problem. Now you could install to a particular path, but to be honest, if you're watching this video, you probably want to just get it working rather than faff around with nerdy, weird locations for your content. So just leave it on install to default location. I always keep the installation files just in case things go wrong, because sometimes things do, don't they? We're going to click OK. And now in a couple of seconds, it gets installed. You can see it says VSD sounds registered successfully. You click OK. 
go to Cubase Nuendo, and now we can see that Bloom is installed. And if we want to check where it's gone to, you can click Details, and here you can see Library, Application Support, Steinberg Content, VST Sound, blah, 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 blah. So now let's see that exact same process, but this time on Windows. So here we are in the Downloads folder, and then going into Steinberg, then Win64, the content set in question, and there you can see the VST Sound. When you double click that, it opens the Library Manager, and just as you've seen before on the Mac, exactly the same options, so we just leave it installing the content to the default location, click OK, and a couple of seconds later, the content is installed, and as you can see under the Keybase Nuendo list, Bloom's been installed, and there's the location. So that's step two of the process, which is installing the content, which either you can do by pressing the install button from the download manager, or you can find that VST sound file and then double click it to open up the library manager. You'll probably have to use the library manager at some point in the future because these things occasionally go wrong. So it's a good idea to know that it's there and have an idea of how to use it to remove and install content. Next, finding the content from within Cubase. So here we are in Cubase and the way to find the content from within Cubase is to open Media Bay, which is either hitting F5 on your keyboard or going to Media and then Media Bay. And here we see it and you will find it under VST Sound because as you saw previously, they are VST Sound files. So we'll expand that. And now we can see the library that we installed, Bloom, Amy Kirkpatrick is here, contains audio files. And here they all are, the loops and the one shots as you've already seen. So that's hopefully the third area where you could have some issues. And once you're in there, it's easy enough to just double click to put them in, or you can drag them from Media Bay, depending on how much space you've got. So you can, either way, whether you double click or you drag them on, it's the same thing. So you end up with those in your project. So there you have it. We've covered the three main areas where you may find a stumbling block on getting content up and running within Cubase. As ever, I hope you found this video useful, and if you have, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.